Hey, 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 it's that time of day. <laughs> it's time for On Top and Hot with your crazy and favorite host, John Zadar. Today, it is August 26th, and it's another week. It's Monday. Now, what I like to do on this show is just to share with you a hot penny stock I found through the day as I was trading penny stocks. That's what I trade every day from bell to bell. Stocks under five bucks that are on every single market. There is no lack of penny stocks, but I'm looking for a hot penny stock, a stock that has potential to make us money. And normally when I find these stocks, and this is key, I'm looking at the charts. I'm not going through the news or looking at filings. There could be a lot of catalysts in there, but folks, the news, the filings, that's lumber, that's wood. They're gonna throw that on a fire. Where's the fire? The chart. You look for a chart that has heat, that can burn the catalyst. If you have great news and a chart that's going downhill, chances are that good news is not gonna flip it around. I mean, it could, but in most cases, it doesn't. But a little tiny piece of news can make a hot chart run. So these are the sort of charts I look for. When I find a hot chart, then I go rummaging around through all those press releases and filings looking for that hot piece of news. And it doesn't have to have come out today or yesterday. When you've got a hot chart, does it matter how big the piece of wood is or how old the wood is? No, it's going to make that fire burn bigger and brighter and hotter. And that's all we're doing. We're looking for some wood to throw on that fire. Anything that has substance. And these are the sort of stocks I like to bring to you. Well, today we are looking at TCJH, Top King Win. Never heard of this company before. Her chart is what caught my attention. She is looking strong. I come over here, we've got strong catalysts. She's got news that just came out. She's dealing with AI, like a lot of companies are right now. And I think we're gonna be looking at a lot of these companies because they are coming out with new novel products, things that AI can do, things we didn't know until we got there. And that's the sort of stuff we're looking at right now. So TCJH, Top King Win, finished today just a little over 28 cents, and she was just a little over 23% gains. Now, this is a hot penny stock on the major exchange. She's on the NASDAQ, which means there are no transaction fees. You get to trade for free. You can trade pre-market, aftermarket, some huge gains to be made in those periods of time. And you can trade then, if you're up or there after market, you don't need any special permissions or special qualifications. Just get in there and trade. The one thing I'll let you know though, because you're gonna do something and then say, it's not working. You didn't change the time period for your order. It's not a day trade, which is in there by default. This is an extended period trade, after hours trade, whatever your platform uses. That's what you gotta get in the box if you want that order to work. There's a lot more money, a lot more volume up on the major exchange. If you're gonna be trading a stock and wanna make a profit, you want those two things involved. And the last thing which should not be overlooked, there's a ton of more rules up on the major exchange than there is down on the OTC, which just ultimately makes our investment safer. So overall, I like trading these penny stocks on the major exchange better than the ones on the OTC, but I do trade them as well. So what is TCJH all about? Well, they tell us here that she's in Pennsylvania, United States, she ain't. This is old information, they haven't updated it yet. As you can see here, this is a Chinese phone number. You can always tell a Chinese phone number by the prefix. America got number one. You wanna make a long distance call from anywhere in the world, you dial a number one and it comes to America. Dial 86 first and it goes to China. So we know this is Chinese, but beyond that, I know it's Chinese because I jumped into the most recent financial to get some information. Yeah, she's got a Chinese address. She's dealing with Chinese companies. She's Chinese. Now we get a description here that the company deals with corporate business training and education. Now, as I'm going through the catalyst, looking at the news, I don't see any mention of that whatsoever. But when I look at their most recent financials, which came out December of 2023, that's as close as we get. That's all they talk about is their education to these big corporate businesses, all the different types of training that they have. But what we're looking at has nothing to do with that whatsoever. So looking at the news, we have two pieces of news here to consider. And that's all we're going to really look at outside of the filings. 
The first piece of news, and I just lost all my highlights. Isn't that nice? <laughs> Not really. Let's see if I can remember what I had here. The company today announced the establishment of its wholly owned subsidiary, Shenzhen Tomorrow Innovation Core Technology. This new venture plan is to focus on creating an advanced artificial intelligence hardware supply chain while delivering comprehensive solutions through AI-driven intelligent systems. This strategic initiative underscores the company's commitment to deepening its presence in the AI industry. Now, maybe they're going to incorporate all that with training. It would make sense to me. As AI continues to evolve rapidly, AI hardware components, such as high-performance computing chips, deep learning accelerators, and smart sensors, have become essential to enabling intelligent operations across various industries. Concurrently, AI-driven intelligence systems are revolutionizing business processes, offering unprecedented advancements in data analysis, automated decision-making, and operational efficiency. Now, this is something you have to remember. AI is always going to be doing these tasks. It's got all these different jobs it's doing for you, and it's making your business more efficient. You may be saving money, making money, doing both, saving time. It's great all the way around. But behind the scenes, the whole point to AI is to accumulate data. And it doesn't just use the data once and toss it into the burn pile. No, saves all that data. And then they correlate that data together and create chunks of it and they sell it to people who want that sort of information. So it's just business on top of business. The longer AI is doing its job, the more data it has got. They go on to tell us that Tomorrow Innovation aims to be at the forefront of this technological convergence, combining a robust AI hardware supply chain with the state-of-the-art intelligent systems. Two different systems here, intelligent systems and AI. I'm not real familiar with intelligent systems. Shenzhen Tomorrow Innovation's mission is to support enterprises in sectors like smart manufacturing, urban development, and healthcare by providing fully integrated solutions that optimize hardware capabilities system performances. Through strategic partnerships with leading AI hardware manufacturers and system integrators worldwide, the company will offer end-to-end -end solutions that address the complex needs of modern enterprises. Now, I don't know if they've made any deals yet. This kind of makes it sound like they already have partnerships in place. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. I haven't seen any information about that here. And then finally here, they tell us the planned product launches include industry-specific intelligence systems, such as AI-driven production line management, smart customer relationship management, and big data-powered precision marketing solutions. These systems will leverage advanced AI hardware to enable real-time data processing and intelligent decision-making, thereby empowering enterprises to optimize resources and streamline operations, which is the bottom line with all AI for the most part, one way or another. The other piece of news also has lost all of its highlights. That's okay. I know what this is about too. They've been under a dollar for too long. On the major exchange, you fall under a dollar for too long, you get a warning from the NASDAQ. You're in hot water. You have to get your price up over a dollar. It has to go over a dollar close over a dollar for 10 consecutive days. Now, that doesn't mean it can't dip under a dollar during those 10 days, but at the end of the day, it better be up over a dollar. After 10 consecutive days of us investors getting that price up over a dollar, the company's out of hot water. Voila. If they don't get it done in the specific amount of time they're given, you are normally given six months. If you're under a dollar for too long, they were. They have got till... December 4th, 2024, to get their price up. Now, what happens if they don't? What happens if we don't get it up? Well, then the company steps in. They've got one of two choices. Do nothing and let the company fall down to the OTC, and the price is going to tumble with it. They're falling out of a lot of investors' range. It's just a bad place to be. We don't want that. Or do a reverse stock split. <laughs> Those are the only two choices. No, the first choice is to bid the price up. If we get the price up over a dollar, it could fall back under a dollar and we'd start this whole process over. But if we don't, yes, those are the two options we have to consider and it's not nice either way. 
Now, I have read that I do believe it's September of this year. They are changing the rules to this. Instead of giving six months, they're going to be giving a year. A year to get your price up over a dollar. Oh, for bloody heck's sake. You can't get your price up over a dollar in a year. You're in really bad shape, aren't you? And the last thing we've got to consider are those um, filings. We've got a couple here. We've got a 6K up at the top. This has to do with management changes. The financial officer left. He resigned. They got a new one. They had two directors leave. They replaced them. They got that taken care of. The other one is the NASDAQ notification. Got all the details in there. And then the only financial we have is the 20F because it's a foreign company. You get a 20F for financial. That came out April 30th for the period of December 31st, the whole year. And those are the only financials we get. So let's take a look at what the relative volume is for the company today. Wow. Whoa, look at that explosion, folks. We were under a million as an average per day over the last 30 days. Today, we went over 25 million shares. People like AI news. It is a buzzword. Taking a look at the share structure. Oh, this is the first time I've seen it. I did not peak. Outstanding share count. We are just under 11 million. I don't know what the insiders own, but I'm sure they own something. A low float is constituted at 10 million shares. Anything under that is a low float. Look, 20 million to me is a low float. Anything under 100 million is a good float. Well, subtract whatever the insider zone, and that's going to give us our real float, which is probably under 10 million. So yeah, we've got ourselves a really nice float here, which means if she does, oh my God, let's take a look at that uh, relative volume for today. 25 million shares. And we've got 10 million total. That is outstanding. We don't know how many of the insiders own. Well, let's just say there's 10 million on the market. Every single share sold two and a half times over today. That means when people start wanting the shares, there's not enough to go around. That's a supply and demand issue. People can hold the shares and nope, I want more for it than that. Nope, kick the price up. I want more. And it looks like a short squeeze when it's just supply and demand. So we've got a great share structure over here. Market cap, we are at 2.5 million. Financials for TCJH. All right, we're looking over four years and we got to put three zeros behind any of the numbers on any of these charts. So we are looking at millions of dollars here. Back in 2020, we were at 1.3, kicked it way up in 2021 to 6.2, then lost half of that. Went down to 3.1 in 2022. And now we're back up to 5.4 and we're taking home, uh, looks like over 60% of that in profit. So we're doing pretty good. Quarterlies, I don't understand that. These are all over the place. And as I said, I've already dove into the most recent financial out there and it is the annual for 2023. I haven't seen any biannuals, which are every six months, which would be out right now. I haven't seen any quarterly reports. I did jump over to Yahoo to see if they had any information on finances. Nothing more than we have here. Balance sheet is going to be up to 2023 when it comes up. There we go. December 2023, adding those three zeros here, cash and cash equivalents, we're at about four and a half million. Total assets, 10.2 million. Hey, liabilities is down there, 2.8 million. So we are holding stockholder equity of about seven and a half million. So she seems to be making money. It's been, she whiz, eight months, and we don't know what the heck is going on here. Honestly, I haven't seen any news about what they're doing with businesses in China for training. There hasn't been any news on that at all. Now, I'll tell you, there's a lot of information in that 20F. A lot. Those foreign financials have a lot more information than any 10K or 10Q I've ever seen because there's a lot of international stuff in there that is really dry and boring and I can't find any value in. So if you're going to dive into that to do some research, it may be the best place to get hard facts. Put in like 2024 into your search bar. That'll bring up everything that's current from 
2023, right? That's when we don't know what the heck's going on. See if you see any deals in there, if you see any investments, if you see anything, anything. It could be catalysts that I am totally unaware of. So the companies involved with AI now, they are going to be working in the supply chain. They make it first sound like they're involved with hardware, but then it makes it sound like they're involved with software. They've got products that are going to be involving AI and intelligent systems. I'm going to have to do some research on intelligent systems. Not real sure what that is. But as you can see, there was a lot of volume around this company today. And as far as I'm concerned, the chart was hot when I looked at it at one o'clock. I then did all my due diligence, so I haven't peeked at it. I probably should have before I made this video. But that's what kind of makes this fun for me too. All right, let's go see what we got. So where are we going to do this charting? Well, I can't speak for you, but I'm going to do mine on my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. So we've got TCJH opened, top king win. We're looking at a six month, four hour view. And as you can see, it's a very volatile downtrend these last six months. Back in January, we had a high of $2.14 and then an abrupt fall down to 80 cents. She then climbed up and mounted onto that 200 again, and she was up there pretty well for a while, up until April. Then she fell from about a buck 50 down to 40 cents. That's a very strong support right there. From there, she fell down to her low of 15 cents, and right now she is in the middle of a breakout. All right, let's get some more supports and resistances while we're yakking away here about them. All right, I'm gonna grab these up as best I can see them. They're a little tough to see, but not impossible. So we've got a few up above us. Let's grab one more uh, right about there. And then let's grab some below me. You can't get your trade plan organized unless you have a stop loss, which is obviously up underneath where we're at. So now we've got all of our supports and resistances. We know where the price is gonna go. But more than that, we know where it's gonna slow down underneath that resistance. It's going to bump its head, bang, bang, maybe get through, maybe fall down. When it gets on top, it'll bounce on it a few times, see if it's strong enough. If it is, it'll start to climb. When it starts to climb away from that support now, now's the time to get in. Well, she came all the way up here, hitting this strong resistance at 40 cents and fell back to this resistance at 26 cents. And she's bouncing off of it right now on that 200 day SMA. This is a perfect setup for a breakout, folks. Not only do we have it hitting the 200 here, but our 200 haul at the bottom, which is where I like to see it, has just changed trend and is now coming up. All of our other SMAs in between the two 200s is climbing and pushing up. All of our oscillators are on an uptrend right now. Four hour chart looks very promising to me, folks. Take a look at our 20 day, one hour view. Squeeze this up a little bit, see what we got going here. So, 20 days ago, we were at about 32 cents. She fell down to this strong support at 20 cents, dipped hard to 15 cents, came back up to that strong support of 20. And when she got close to the 200 here, she decided to break out. Actually, it wasn't the 200, it is the 50. Right here, she got to the 200 haul and the 50. She crossed two very strong SMAs. Look how tiny the bars were here, and then look how big they get. Just crossing right here. Lots of power came into the picture. Calm down, but now she's on top of the nine day. She was not there before. She was on it, but not on top of it. Now she's climbing. She's getting a good bounce on. She pushed here from about 22 cents up to 40 cents. We're just shy of 100% gain. Now, this was a bounce that happened yesterday. The news came out today. And as you're going to see on the smaller time frames, let's come on down to, actually, I want to come down to the 30 minute here. So we have a trend change. You can see our 200 day SMA here falling right here where we had this big jump. She's starting to go flat, totally flat here. And our price is underneath it underneath it came down to the strong support and then just as our 200 was starting to curve up she jumped and started running now these bounces correlate to the news this one was for the filing when they changed the management 
There was a lot of excitement about that. A lot of volume came in. The price moved real fast, but it came down real fast, even lower than where it started. Thank God for that strong support. And then this, she started the run yesterday before there was any news. The news came out today. And when it came out, it came out early. She jumped from 24 cents up to 40 cents, another 80% bounce, came back down, and she's been going sideways all day, acting like nothing happened. Actually, I think there's a delayed effect here. I think we're going to see more coming into the picture, folks. She has come to her strong SMAs here, both of them again, our 200 haul and our 50, laying on each other. She's tagged that, and look at her big bar. Look at that big bar with a long wick. She's pushing away from it hard, stretching. Our oscillators, our PPO. Percentage price oscillator is starting to climb. Just like our MACD, we got a crossover there. These two oscillators are cousins. The MACD uses the full price to figure its stuff out, where the PPO, the percentage price oscillator, right, uses a percentage of the price. And then we've got our RSI down here. It's been climbing from about uh, 48 up to 60. Everything is looking good right now, folks. Take a look at our 5-day 15-minute cleaner than your five day five minute so there's your big run on the filing of a change of management we had a dip jump back up to the 200 and she got stuck between the 200 and that very strong resistance right in there once she got on top yesterday she started to climb and notice she was climbing even after market before there was any news my point here is she was at a breakout point without the news. And she was already starting to break out yesterday. The news came out today. She had a big pop, meaning people recognized it. We see some value in it. People took their profit. It's fallen back down. And now she's on top of all of these strong SMAs. And she's starting to climb. She came down to that strong SMA here, or not SMA, our support of 26 cents. Look how she's been bouncing on it all day, all day bouncing off this. And then we get a push through and a jump, huge bar, and now we're starting to climb. Everything looks like it's ready to take off here, folks. Our oscillators are just now all starting to push up, except our RSI, believe it or not, our RSI is actually falling when our bars are going up. Let's take a quick peek at the five minutes, see what it looks like. Come on, that's looking good, right? Bouncing across here, she's got some big bars. Look at that. In five minutes, she jumped from 27 cents up to 31 cents. And look, we've got a new support right there, folks. She keeps hitting her head. Bing, bing, bing. I might as well draw it now because who knows where it's going to play out tomorrow morning. Oscillators are showing heat. She's floating on top of her nine. All of her SMAs are curved up, evenly combed, and climbing. Folks, this is ready for a pop. I can't guarantee it, but I've just shown you why I think so. She's got Catalyst and AI. She's working with something we're not quite sure what it is, but it sounds new, right? Looks like they're making money. They have stockholder equity. They've got a low float. They're ticking all the boxes. Now's the time to watch it. Ticker TCJH, top king win. I'm liking everything we see for the next couple of days. Could be tomorrow, though. She could be running. But of course, do some more due diligence, folks. Don't rely on my research for your investments. That's your money. Go make sure I got my facts right. You know where I looked. Just follow up behind me. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. <laughs> see ya.